Let us pray. Amen. O Lord our God, we know that you speak in many ways. And often that is through silence. We don't like your silence. Often we don't like silence at all. But today, we give you thanks that you also speak to us in the spoken word. Holy Spirit, speak to us now, we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 51, verses 15 through 17. <laughs> O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. This is the word of the Lord. Yeah, Silence is the ultimate weapon of power. Charles de Gaulle. Silence fell between us. This was a common occurrence whenever we're alone. When you're comfortable with someone, you don't always need to fill the void with noise. Mm -hmm. I liked it when we would just be. Elizabeth Yulberg. In the silence of the heart, God speaks. If you face God in prayer and silence, God will speak to you. Then you will know that you are nothing. It is only when you realize your nothingness, your emptiness, that God can fill you with God's self. Souls of prayer are souls of great silence. Mother Teresa. Perfect prayer does not consist in many words. Silent remembering and pure intention raises the heart to that supreme power. Amen. Ray. Let silence take you to the core of life. Really. Mm -hmm. Silence has long been an important discipline of spiritual life. One cannot truly know prayer without silence. One can only, one cannot I'm sorry one cannot truly know oneself mm. without silence. Mm -hmm. One cannot truly know oneself as God's beloved no. without silence. The scars that everyday life inflicts upon our souls are healed by the salve of silence. Mm. Silence communicates healing and restoration in places where words fall empty. And powerless. Richard Foster writes in his chapter on solitude about the interconnection between the disciplines of solitude and silence. He writes, though silence sometimes involves the absence of speech, it always involves the act of listening. Mm -hmm. He quotes Ecclesiastes 3 verse 7 which says, but there is a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, silence has been a tool for the believer to encounter the divine. Pastorally, silence has been a tool to create sacred space for things unspeakable. Mm -hmm. Before God created the world, the Spirit of God hovered over the water, silently preparing to do one of the most miraculous things yet. When Lazarus died, Jesus had no words, and so he wept. Silence is an act in which the divine participates, and we do well to do the same. Okay, so we get silence is important. But what about the times when silence is misused? What about the times when we should be speaking up when in fact we are silent? <laughs> What about when our silence becomes sin? Wow. Wow. In the 51st Psalm, the psalmist does not write about silence. The psalmist writes about speaking up. 
Here she writes, on these lips, oh, sorry, open these lips, oh God, so that my mouth can declare your praise. Mm -hmm. What are we declaring with our words? Mm -hmm. Or our silence? You see, we know in the back of our minds that the world is not right. Things are not as they should be. One need only look at the nightly news to understand that things have run amok, not only in our country, but all over the world. Mm -hmm. Things are changing daily. Within our country alone, policies are being put into place that limit where people can travel. Well, Laws are being written stating that those who are from certain places in our world or who identify with particular religions are yeah. not welcome in this place. Well, no, no, no. you better say that. Rules and restrictions are being placed upon our brothers and our sisters about which public bathroom they are allowed to enter when they simply need to relieve themselves like every other human being. Mm -hmm. well. What is going on here? <laughs> the psalmist writes, O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. He or she continues, For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give you a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. In other words, we could say, God does not delight in the demands of religion simply for religion's sake. God does not delight in the gifts of sinful hands. Mm -hmm. The rest of the psalm makes that clear. Mm -hmm. So what God, does God desire? It says, a broken spirit mm -hmm. and a contrite heart. Often we look at this passage and take it to mean a spiritually broken spirit or a spiritually contrite heart. But what does that even mean? <laughs> A heart that is broken and contrite over sin. Yes, it must mean that. But what does this sin include? Mm -hmm. This psalm is not referring to the sins of the people. It is referring to personal sin. Verses 10 through 12 read, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a, right, a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Mm -hmm. This is not a y'all-come-repentance party. Right. No, this is a quiet reflection in the silent moments of personal repentance. Mm -hmm. So if the psalm is referring to personal sin, and if God desires a broken and contrite heart over this sin, what then can we say? To what is the psalmist referring, and what does it mean for you and for me today? Well, I think it starts with recognizing our personal bent towards sin. And what does that include? In our world today, sin looks like excluding the other whom God has created and called us to love. Sin looks like racism and hatred and abuse and Sin looks like blindness to the realities of our world, blindness to the needs of our brothers and sisters around the world. Mm -hmm. Sin looks like gorging on more than plenty while some go hungry. Mm -hmm. Sin looks like failing to realize that we hold the power to effect change in our circles of influence. Mm -hmm. The psalmist cries out, Create in me a clean heart, mm -hmm. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Perhaps what God desires, more than our religiosity or our intentions for purity, is simply that we are broken by the things that weigh down our world. Mm. Perhaps what God desires is a contract heart regarding all that is not right in society. Perhaps what God desires is lips that are open and ready to speak profound words of healing to the brokenness that surrounds us. Earlier this week, I had the privilege of joining some of my fellow students at Truett Theological Seminary up the road, who with me comprised the Truett Black Student Association. Yes, I'm a member of the Truett Black Student Association. <laughs> Amen. As we held a teach-in regarding the matters of black lives, 
The workshop that I led at this teach-in was entitled Standing in Solidarity, How to Be an Ally. Mm -hmm. At the end of one of my workshop, ses workshop sessions, an attendee posed the question, how do you respond to overt racism? Like when someone says a blanket statement such as, I hate black people. Mm -hmm. I must admit that I really butchered my answer to her question. But I think the most important part of what we were trying to teach, what we were trying to teach throughout the entire night, was that we must have the conversation about racism in America. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is alive and active, and we must name it before we can end it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The best part of my failed attempt to answer this attendee's question was that we must continue the conversation. As allies of the cause, we cannot sit back and let harmful things be said about our friends, mm -hmm. our brothers, our sisters. Mm -hmm. As allies, we must speak up, say something, because regardless of how conversation ending a statement like that can be, we still have a voice that we are responsible for using. And there are many conversations that need to be had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So in our world that is still filled like sin, still filled with sin like racism and hatred and prejudice about many things, how do we respond? Well, we speak up. We pray to the God of all creation to open our lips that our mouths may declare the praise of God. The praise which includes telling the truth that all of God's creation is good and beautiful. We create space for conversation so that all voices may be heard, not just the most privileged ones. Mm -hmm. We allow our spirits to become broken and contrite regarding the things that break God's heart to you. Mm -hmm. We ask for purity, for eyes that have clear vision to see what God sees, including all of God's people living in the knowledge of God's love for them. <coughs> Silence can heal. Silence can kill. Yes. What are we declaring with our words? Or our silence? My silences have not protected me. Your silence will not protect you. But for every real spoken word, for every attempt I had ever made to speak those truths for which I am still seeking, I have made contact with other women while we examine the works to fit in a world, to fit a world in which we all believe, bringing our differences, bridging our differences. All to the Lord. Your very silence shows you the beauty, mm. your abilities. It may be well, it may well be that we will have to repent in this generation. Mm. Not merely for the vitriolic words and the violent actions of the bad people, mm. but for the appalling silence and indifference of the good people who sit around and say, yeah. Come wait on. on time. Come wait on, time. you better say that. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs>